Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over uh, tomorrow's UFC card from a betting perspective. Uh, for those of you that have followed these videos, uh, you can check out the DFS approach to this slate. Um, that's the majority of what I do, but in the last six months or so, I've been getting more involved in the MMA betting uh, aspect of these fights. And for those of you that have not seen these before, it's a, quite a contrarian approach to, uh, to a sports betting. It's very similar to the way I uh, I analyze the stock market, which has been probably responsible for the majority of my success in my life. Um, in addition, it's the way I handle all sports betting related uh, analysis. Uh, I, I don't feel as though I'm capable of of, of out analyzing the, the the line. You know, uh, the, the the actual the actual money line of all of these props and these, these, these wagers is the sum of just all the intelligence in the betting community. And to feel as though you can uh, out, you know, out game the entire public um, enough to overcome this, this big is, is, I don't know. I mean, for me, I, I prefer to, to use a, a psychological approach, which has worked for me in all kinds of facets of, of gambling and in life basically try to figure out which where the value is based on what the public expects in other words if it's so obvious to go on one side of this of this uh, of, of the fight or one side of the of the prop then that line is probably overvalued you know uh, the, the 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 idea is to try to figure out what of a line is being driven by bias what part of a line is being driven by psychology, what part of a line is being driven by hope and things like that, and attention, intentionally try to fade that. And it may seem easy, but it's not. Um, and you should see the way I handle uh, my hedge fund and, and the stock market with respect to that. And that's the way I've been doing that for about 25 years. Uh, nonetheless, we're going to approach this from, a, from the same perspective. And here are the rules for those that have not been following this. I'm going to be betting every single fight. Uh, one thing, every single fight, I'm going to be betting the same amount on each fight. And I am going to be betting my own money on every fight. It's going to be one unit. And for me, a unit is $180, just so you know, the real money. And I'm going to put that in. I can't put it in right now because Zoom does not allow me or DraftKings does not allow me to put bets in while Zoom is running for some reason. It considers it kind of an illegal software or location prohibiting software somehow. Nonetheless, I am going to put all this stuff in uh, afterwards. And, you know, another thing to keep in mind is that you're going to get some, some, some bets that you're just going to hate. And that's kind of the fun of this is if you didn't hate it, it would probably be an overvalued side. You know, if it was such an easy bet to make, then everybody's probably making it. And as a result, you're probably on the wrong end. So we're going to be very, very contrarian, and it's a really, really fun sweat. Um, and for those of you who are following this, you guys are all up money, and uh, it, it, it sometimes takes a little while because we go lose, 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 and hit a plus 800 or something like that. Nonetheless, let's get into this, this fight card, and uh, you guys can bet exactly what I bet. I don't really care, um, and we're going to just uh, have some fun with this. All right, so first fight, we have Clayton Carpenter versus Juan Camilo uh, Ronderos. Um, so what we have here is we have a, a fight between kind of an up-and-comer with a with a 6-0 record against a guy who is 4-1, and one, but he, he made his, his, his debut, uh, and he got wiped out, okay? He got wiped out a minute and a half, and... After that, he actually tested positive for weed and cocaine. I mean, what is this guy doing in the UFC? I mean, they're obviously setting this fight up for the Clayton Carpenter side. And I've actually heard one pretty well-known MMA handicapper describe like his history with Clayton Carpenter. And this guy's been really just been been in the in the mix for like a long time. And they've been setting this kid up right from the beginning. So what that means is that if I can know that, then everybody knows that. So essentially the Clayton Carpenter side is dead as far as I'm concerned. The Clayton Carpenter side money line is dead. The Carpenter by finish line is dead. Um, the, the one side of this that I don't think anybody is going to play is this Rondero side of the equation. Um, it just, it just makes no sense, right? I mean, he was bad in his first UFC fight and he tested positive 
and he's off a layoff, it's an atrocious bet, which probably means that's probably where the value is. So we are going to take Ronderos plus the 260 for 180. Now, again, I don't think it's going to let me, but let's see. Well, let me do this. Oh, it actually did. Wow. Awesome. All right. Next fight. AJ Fletcher versus Themba Garimbo. So here's another one. I mean, th this is... This is one's interesting. So AJ Fletcher, he came off a contender series uh, uh, fight and he fought Matt Semmelsberger, I think it was over the summer, and he was awesome, right? He was great. He did lose, but he was very exciting. And then everybody was all over him in his last fight against Lusa and he basically kind of gassed out. Um, so the, the bloom is off the rose a little bit, but they they're, they're, they really believe that they want to get this guy a win so they're bringing this garimbo guy in um so probably the side that you don't want to play is is fletcher inside the distance because fletcher inside the distance that corresponds to this like the narrative that ooh, maybe he doesn't have the greatest cardio so i think what we're going to do is we are going to play either aj fletcher by decision, or we're just going to go play Garimbo, okay? But I don't think Garimbo is really the side because Fletcher did lose his last two fights. So I think that that it's coming off of two losses. You're probably with, you know, the, the line's probably being held down just kind of a little bit. So we're just going to go ahead and play either Fletcher inside, Fletcher by decision, or maybe we just go the 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 over. Okay, the over is over 2.5 is, is plus 130. I think that's really, really safe here. So we're just going to get, well, it's not safe, but I think that's what we're going to do. So over two and a half rounds for 180. Very nice. Okay. Um, next, we have Nazim Sadikov versus Evan Elder. Um, this one's kind of a tough read. Uh, you're, you're, this is one of the least analyzed of all the fights. The one thing I will say is that um, Evan Elder is expected to be more of a wrestler, despite the fact that Sadikov has that kind of Russian sounding name. Okay. Um, so I, I think that this fight is the closest I can come to kind of a pass. So when we have these fights that are kind of a pass, we're going to probably just, just, Again, just go for something sort of safe. So we, we're going to go for the, again, the over uh, over 2.5 minus the 120. So there's no real big edge in this one. But I just couldn't find any, any you know, any big overwhelming lead for the public. So with the absence of that, you know, probably should pass. But since I said I was going to bet every fight, we're just going to go ahead and do this. All right, uh, next, Philippe Linz versus... St. Pru. Okay, this one to me looks very easy. So St. Pru is basically on his last legs. You know, he's he's got, he's 39 years old. In his last fight, he was just really, really miserable. Um, and Philip Linz apparently has basically, you know, he, he won the million dollars at the PFL. Um, he's got, he's got wrestling upside as well. Uh, he's got kind of an age advantage. So St. Pru is probably on the way out. If anything, maybe St. Pru can, um, you know, I don't know, just kind of hang in there. But but I just haven't really seen too many people take the St. Pru side of this. So I think this is kind of where the line value probably is. It's probably either St. Pru or maybe St. Pru inside the distance. Um, that would be kind of by KO. Um, but I think that St. Pru has enough KOs on his record in the past to probably make this line probably not as good. And I, I'm afraid to not to get the submission to kind of, you know, uh, whatchamacallit. I'm afraid to get the submission in there um, to, I don't know, uh, to ruin me. But what I can do, let's play, let's, we could play St. Pru inside the distance. So what that means, we have to go to, what is it, method of victory? Is that what it'd be? Winning method. You go double chance, right? Yeah, method, double chance, St. Pru either by KO or submission. So St. Pru inside the distance plus 330, we're going to try that one. That's like so dumb. 
It just might work. Okay. Um, moving on, we have Emmers versus Kusein Askabov. Um, all right, so we have Askabov, who is a 23 and 0 fighter from Russia uh, against Jamal Emmers, who, who everybody agrees on one thing. He's got an atrocious fight IQ. Um, however, the, the, the most recent of the, of the narrative is that Askabov has not really fought anybody. So there's two ways that you can approach this. You can either play Askabov inside the distance, or you could just play Emmer straight up. Um, so let's just kind of take a look at the odds here. Those are the only, I think that's the only way you can play value. Let's look at Askabov inside the distance first. And again, inside the distance for the purposes of um, DraftKings would be this double chance thing. So Askabov by KO or submission uh, would be plus 180. It's okay. On the other hand, you have Emmer's plus 135 straight up. Um, let's go and play the, uh, the Askabov. Uh, inside the distance. So let's go winning method, ask above by double chance. Uh, plus 300 or 180. Let's go. Um, okay, next we have uh, Lena Landsberg versus Mary Buena Silva. So here, here is, this is, this is the easy thing, okay? This is so simple. Although Mario Buena Silva is minus 490, she just has, just has really just not a finisher. The only way that she had a finish was, was basically kind of fluky when Stephanie Egger took her down. Um, and so while Buena Silva is kind of, you know, probably a lot to win, she really doesn't have any finishing upside. So what we are going to do is we are gonna play her to finish. Right. So I think Maria Buena Silva, either by KO or by submission works. I think the value actually is going to rely, is going to lie on the KO um, because at least in her last win, where she finished, she did get the submission. So I think this is probably a little bit overvalued. So we'll play Maria Buena Silva by KO, which I don't think she's ever got. So uh, Silva by KO. For 180 plus like five to one. I like that. Okay. Um, moving on, we have Jim Miller versus Alexander Hernandez. All right. So this is this is kind of easy for me. You have uh, Alexander Hernandez, who is going just you know, just kind of comes out there pretty aggressively. Um and he wrestles or he comes out explosively too. He had a really action fight against Billy Quarantillo. And Jim Miller was basically one round or bust, who is now two rounds or bust. He's been getting finishes in here. So the question is whether you want to play you know, Hernandez early or Miller early. So if that's the question, you know what we're going to do? We're going to play this to go over. So Miller, Hernandez, over the 2.5, well, actually, over 1.5 is minus 135. Maybe we can get an alternative. Want to try that? So we could either do, we could either go, well, this could be interesting. We could either go the over, or what if we did something like Hernandez round two? Or even round three. Wow. That's a pretty big jump from round two to round three. It's so impossible to see it happening that I think we're going to do this. So we're either going to do over 2.5 or Hernandez in round three. But the thing is, Hernandez round three is just capturing some of this Hernandez inside the distance money, which I think is, is, is you know, a little bit whatever. Um, but what about Hernandez by decision? So what's better, Hernandez? Because I don't think Miller wins by decision. So if you get Hernandez by decision, as opposed to the over 2.5, what's the over 2.5? Let's see what that is. 
and we'd have to get an alternative 2.5 and I, I don't have the patience for that. So let's just go oh, alternative turnaround there is over 2.5, just plus 140. Nah, we're not doing that. We're going to play Hernandez in, to, by decision. That's that's a good idea. It's like almost impossible, right? I mean, Miller always gets finished. So we'll, we'll play this time he won't. Hernandez by decision. Oh, I've been up for 500. Oh, God, I suck. Uh, I wonder if I can get out of that. Crap. Mm. Let's look at my bets. I wonder if I can cancel that. I didn't mean to do that for 500. Let's see. Nope. Can't cancel it. All right. So we got by, we misclicked. Oh my God. Two and three, almost three units on Hernandez by decision. Good luck with that. Good grief. All right. Let's get back to this. Oh my God. All right. MMA, UFC. Let's move on. Oh God. Hope we win. All right, William Knight versus Marcin Prakniao. Um, all right, you're seeing a little bit on both sides here. Um, but the one thing you're seeing more of is that if, if the Knight is more likely to finish than Prakniao, um, he's much more explosive. You see he's a huge bodybuilder guy, and Prakniao is a little bit more technical. So the only play things I'll bet here are either – Night by decision or Prachnow by 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 finish. So let's see what can we what's better. Let's take a look. Night by decision is plus 450. And Prachnow. Uh hold on. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. And let's look at let's look at Prachnow by double chance. Um, winning method, Prachnow by KO or submission plus two twenty five. So we're going to go night by decision plus four fifty. Oh, I like that. With only one eighty. Go crazy here. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Moving on. 11 fights here. Um, hope they left enough money because I was only going to play 180 times 11. I think I do have money in here. Anyway, um, did Landsberg fight, Miller, Hernandez, we did that. All right, Josh Parisian versus uh, Jamal Pogue. Um, so here's the deal. I mean, Pogue, there are two ways that he could win. This is the thing, that in his last fight, he got like seven takedowns. Excuse me, two fights ago, he had like seven takedowns, but gas. And this past fight, it was a nice, boring striking affair. So it's hard to tell which way to go with him. And Parisian, though, I mean, he is, you know, pretty pretty sloppy himself. He might have a couple of takedowns in him. But this is kind of like one of those sloppy heavyweight fights. So what we're going to do is we're just going to – there's really no edge either, either way here. Um, so we're just going to go with Parisian – as the underdog and think of anything, people are going to play some Pogue as part of parlays. So we're just going to play Parisian plus the two ten. Just, it's really just not a great fight. Uh, betting wise. Oh, there it is. See, can't rotate. Okay. That's fair. That's fair enough. So I, I'll have to remember to, um, to bet the one eighty um, on Parisian after I get logged back on. Um, all right. Uh, moving on. We have, uh, Jordan Wright versus Pac Zach Pagwa. Okay, this is easy. Jordan Wright, every single fight gets finished. It's either in the first round or really early in the second round. And that's just the way Jordan fights go. And there's just no way, there's just no way around it. So um, obviously, we are going to somehow, some way get this fight to a decision. Um, let's see, fight props. Plus four to one to get to a decision. I guess the idea is that maybe Jordan Wright just can wrestle him and just hold him down or something like that. Um, but that doesn't mean he's necessarily going to win. So I still think that Pose can win. So I don't just want to go right by decision. We're going to go fight to go to decision plus 400, the Jordan Wright fight, which never goes to decision. It's just so stupid. Like I said, it just might work. 
Um, all right, so Jessica Andrade versus Aaron Blanchfield. This one is um, another easy one for me to break down because it's either Blanchfield gets the takedowns um, and probably gets drags it into a decision, or Andrade gets uh, gets the KO. So we're just going to go ahead and play Andrade by decision. This is pretty pretty easy for me. I don't think anybody's really playing that, so I think that there's probably some inherent value in there. Jessica Andrade by decision. 180 and there you go so um it's hard to summarize uh because some of them are out of my bet slips but we'll remember i think it was andrage by decision plus 650 we had jordan wright in uh to go to decision plus 400 we had josh josh parisian plus 210 uh then we had uh ronderos right plus the money line we had, I think, Pletcher, Fletcher by decision, I think. I think that's what it was. Uh, or was that round three? I forget. We had Sadikov Elder. I think I had no opinion on that. What did I do? I think I just did I just did plus 110 or something like that on the on the over. Um, we had uh, St. Pru. Um, I was a plus 400 inside the distance. We had Emmer's. Askabov, we have Askabov inside the distance. We had Mero Buena Silva by KO. We had Alexander Hernandez uh, by decision for triple units somehow. We had William Knight by decision, plus 400 or so. And these others are on the board. So again, this is some wild stuff that we're betting, but I do think that there is like really sneaky inherent value in all of it. Uh, this will be a fun card. Good luck, everybody.